I want to take you through the steps of how to program a VE Commodore ECM. We have to log into the ACDelco TDS.com and set up an account. In my case, I just log into my existing account. Nowadays, a verification code will be sent by email, which is one of the ways ACDelco make it harder for us to share the same account with our buddies. We cannot just um, click on the Terms and Conditions Agreement. We must pull it down as if we're actually reading this stuff, and only then can we click on the Agreement box. Now it's time to purchase a programming license, which is valid for 24 months. And the license is only for one vehicle at a time that matches the VIN number of that vehicle. In the old days, you could program as many vehicles as you wanted within the time period that your license was valid. Now we have our subscription. It's time to enter the into the SPS, which is AC Delco's acronym for Service Programming System. It is vital that we have the correct Java that AC Delco recommend, and we may need to clear out some of our old Java or conflicting Java that will stop us from downloading our program file. So be sure to click yes to any of the SPS Java recommendations. I cannot stress how important it is to make sure your battery is properly charged and in good condition. Be sure to hook up your battery to a battery stabilizer and have your computer hooked up to the AC power while you're doing the programming procedure. Any cables that are coming from the car need to be out of the way so that you do not accidentally get caught up or anyone walking by by pulling these cables out from your computer or your car. Any disruption caused while programming can be catastrophic to our new computer which we are trying to program. I should not have worried about downloading the MDI and the Tech2 software as I'm currently only using my DrewTech Kardec M J2534 pass-through box. When we're not constantly doing this sort of stuff, it is so easy to click on things that we don't need. So we need to be careful and we need to slow down and pay attention to every step we take. So if you're like me and you're not using an MDI or a Tech2, simply click skip. Now the fun begins. We are finally ready to download our GM driver that we need so we can download the program for our VE Commodore. You can see how important it is to have the correct Java, which is the gateway to our needed software. I now select the J2534 Kardak M, which is currently hooked up to the DLC in the VE Commodore. I am now searching for Holden, followed by the year 2010. We now currently have a list of the makes of Holdens, and we look for the Commodore, the VE Commodore, which, which I have selected. We now see that AC Delco SPS has started to communicate to our car, and it has pulled the VIN number out of the car and linked this to the software license I've just bought. It is vitally important that I confirm that this is the correct VIN number to the car, which I've taken a photo of the VIN number to verify this. Now we need some specifics about the vehicle, which being a Holden and not a Chevrolet. What module do we want to program? Naturally, I'm clicking on the engine control module. This VE is running a 3 litre SIDI direct injection engine, and the ECM is about double the price of that of a non-SIDI engine. How can prices be so different? I suspect there must be a glutton of the SIDI ECMs that need to be sold. You can now see the transmission type is selected, and we now have to enter in the correct tyre size, which in this case is 225 over 60R16. Now, I had to think on this one, but I selected a standard calibration. I do remember reading that GM brought out a TSB about a software calibration fix for a high oil consumption usage on some of their vehicles. Let the show begin. We can now see the list of calibration files that are about to be loaded onto our new ECM. So the GM server is now downloading these files straight to our vehicle's newly fitted ECM. And it will take 7 to 10 minutes to complete. And it is that simple. Well, almost that simple. Well, there's a few things to complete after the download. After we complete the download, we must go through the diagnostic side of our scan tool and perform a number of ECM resets, including reprogramming the immobilizer, which we will require the, the four-digit PIN number. This is usually found in the Owner's Manuals folder in the glove box, or otherwise we may need to contact Holden with the vehicle's VIN number. While this can be done through AC Delco's test, test to win 
This cost us another subscription. If we use our G-Scan 2, you'll be able to perform this process through the ECM side of the scan tool under special functions. In the past, I thought I would need to go through the tech to win um, to reset the immobilizer. Uh, I have done that in the past, but now I've learned I can use the G-Scan 2. I have a G-Scan 1, but I have a buddy that's got a G-Scan 2 that I was able to use and made it so much easier. So yeah, the trouble with this car, when we did the um, relearn, uh, the reprogramming of the immobilizer, we got part way through and it actually aired. We end up disconnecting the power to the battery and discharging the capacitors by joining the terminals together and waiting a little bit, putting it back together. And after that, we had no trouble doing the reprogram. The vehicle actually starts with the, um, before we do this reprogramming, but it will throw some immobiliser codes. So it is important to carry out this procedure. I hope I've helped with others who are wanting, wanting to do a reprogramming. Uh, it is a little bit um, that you've got to really think and do what it's, Take each step as it comes, but otherwise it is quite straightforward. Thank you. Beep.